Good morning. Cities across the country, millions of people all across the country are waking up to a dark morning in America. The cause that rallied the country to decry systematic violence and racism against our black friends and neighbors, the death of George Floyd and so many others, has been co-opted by rioters and looters to use the moral soul of this movement as cover to destroy our communities. Minneapolis, Seattle, Chicago, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Denver, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Miami, Milwaukee, all across the country, we continue to witness, and our children continue to witness, a nation in chaos. Our first responders were heroic last night. They were heroic the night before, and I know they will continue to show honor, courage, and professionalism in the days to come. The vast majority of our community was also heroic last night. The hundreds of thousands who stayed home and stayed inside with their families protected their families. I want to thank you. But the smaller group of agitators and rioters, I'm speaking to you. You're not just burning and destroying someone else's home. You're burning your community, too. This is also your home. It no longer feels like sincere mourning for the death of George Lloyd and many other black men and women in our country. This behavior that we've seen for the second night is blatant lawlessness and selfish violence. Our first responders had an impossible task last night. So in closing, I want to say this. Yes, last night we saw violence continue to spread throughout our city. But our 911 operators, our police officers, our firefighters, and many others still managed to adapt quickly and prevent many large-scale flare-ups. I know that they saved last, lives last night, and I know they protected many parts of our community. So I want to take this moment to thank them personally from the bottom of my heart. We acknowledge and join in the deep well of frustration and anger that has acted as a catalyst for so many in our community during this last week. But I ask you that if you truly love this city, if you truly care that your message around injustice be shared, please join me in standing side by side with other black leaders, our city leaders, and others who feel the deep pain by sharing that call and action and that message peacefully. Agitators are not led by a conviction to change systematic racism. They are opportunists, using the cover of legitimate protests to sow fear in our communities. With regard to the curfew order, I've already made a decision to extend that curfew order tonight. There'll be more details forthcoming. People should expect that once again it will start at 8 p.m. Thank you. Okay, our next panelist uh, will be Portland Police Bureau Chief Jamie Resch. And I want to remind folks, if you have any questions, to hold them until after our panelists have speaking, uh, spoken, rather, and then we'll take your questions. Good morning. I'm Jamie Resch, Chief of the Portland Police Bureau. When I went off on my mandatory furlough leave, I left a city that was on the, pre the precipice of reopening. Within the space of a few days, we have seen our city damaged by a group of selfish individuals. While we watched other cities across the country experience violence and looting, we had no indications that Portland would ex experience similar devastation. We understood and acknowledged the heightened emotion, though, and had made preparations with the priority of preserving life and property. On a beautiful Friday evening, about a thousand peace uh, people peacefully gathered in Peninsula Park 
and held a vigil to honor the life of George Floyd. After this event, most of the participants left to go home and several hundred others began marching towards downtown. This quickly evolved into vandalism, a shooting, fires being set in occupied buildings and in the streets, and mass looting and destruction. One individual was shot and sustained non-life-threatening injuries. A police officer was struck by a thrown incendiary device and was injured. These significant crimes were committed by hundreds of individuals over the course of several hours. We used every resource at our disposal, and it was not enough to stop the widespread criminal acts for many hours. Our officers and fire partners worked tirelessly over the course of the night to put out fires, try to disperse the crowd, make arrests, and respond to the additional emergency calls for service. I would like to thank Commissioner Hardesty for her leadership in quick action and preparing the emergency order for curfew, which Mayor Wheeler signed. The declaration of emergency and the implementation of a curfew provided police with an important tool for us to keep Portlanders safe. For Saturday, we were able to plan for a large event and brought in additional resources. The crowds were smaller than the previous night and police encountered smaller groups of people splintering off. Despite this, we still had significant property damage and made several arrests. I want to reiterate that widespread destruction is unacceptable. Our city has been deeply stained by this ugliness. This watershed event will require those of us who live, work, or visit Portland to reevaluate what we want public safety to look like. Public safety is up to all of us. If we want a safe city, we have to work together in concert. We cannot permit those who engage in violent acts a pass. To our business community, we know you are already have a financial challenge due to the global pandemic. We wish we had more resources and the ability to protect your property from arson and destruction. You comprise the heart of our downtown core. Your, relations, your relationships with us matter, and we hope this has not marred your commitment to our city. Our partner agencies are providing much needed and appreciated mutual aid in our time of need, and our gratitude is deep. I cannot thank the members of the Portland Fire and Rescue, the Gresham Police Department, the Port of Portland Police Department, Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, Washington County Sheriff's Office, Washougal Police Department, and the Oregon State Police enough. In addition, I want to sincerely thank the dispatchers and the call takers at the Bureau of Emergency Communications for their countless hours of work and support. Thank you to you all. I also want to publicly thank Deputy Chris Davis and my command staff for their leadership Friday night into Saturday morning. I have always had the highest confidence in the command team for the Portland Police Bureau. Their leadership, along with the professional and courageous acts of every member of the Portland Police Bureau team, has only reinforced my confidence and pride. I want to close with a message of hope. Portland has always prided itself in being progressive, unique, and innovative. We are leaders in community policing. This is not a time to model behavior, but to lead by example and to gather peacefully, to heal, and to move forward. Thank you. Our next speaker is Portland Fire and Rescue Division Chief Ryan Gillespie. Good morning. My name is Ryan Gillespie, and I'm a Division Chief with Portland Fire and Rescue. I'm a member of Chief Sarah Boone's command staff. Chief Boone asked me to take careful watch of our teams as we responded to multiple emergencies last night. I can tell you it was another busy night for Portland Fire and Rescue in the city of Portland. Last evening, we responded on five structure fires, two vehicle fires, and 12 dumpster or miscellaneous type fires. Our crews also responded on numerous medical calls. I'm so proud of our firefighters for continuing to commit themselves to keep each and every one of us in this city safe. I would like to especially thank our members who volunteer to train and deploy as EMTs and medics with Portland Police Bureau's rapid response teams. These members have made a special commitment to enter dangerous environments side by side with our partners from Portland Police Bureau. They are there to provide medical care to injured people, whether civilian or public safety, and they did their job without hesitation these last two nights. I'd like to thank our City of Portland Public Safety Partners, Bureau of Emergency Communications Dispatchers, American Medical Response, Bureau of Emergency Management, and especially Portland Police and Chief Jamie Resch. Also, thank you to the public safety agencies from outside of the city 
who have assisted us. We are such a strong community due to the cooperation and professionalism that you saw between these agencies the last couple of nights. Lastly, I'd like to thank Mayor Ted Wheeler and his team, Commissioner Joanne Hardesty and her team, and the many civic leaders of our city who have stepped up in support of our community and in support of those who are hurting deeply right now. We at Portland Fire and Rescue would like to ask that we all take a moment to remember that this is our city. Please love and take care of each other. We will get through these challenging times together. Thank you. And our final speaker today is Portland Bureau of Emergency Management Director Mike Myers. Mike. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Myers. I'm the Director of uh, Portland Bureau of Emergency Management for the City of Portland. I've been asked to speak today about the response efforts for last night's protest and, and early Saturday morning's um, response. Um, I can't do that without framing up some context. Over the last 90 days, your emergency management division, it's about 20 individuals, have been uh, working tirelessly around the clock at the Emergency Coordination Center with a combination of other bureaus across the city of Portland in tight cooperation with Multnomah County Public Health, Multnomah County Emergency Management, working with dozens and dozens of community-based organizations, uh, thousands of hours of volunteer work from our neighborhood emergency teams around Portland to provide basic food assistance, making sure that people can eat, making sure that people have shelter, that our workers, staff have personal protective equipment, that hygiene products are out in the community, that we have rent assistance and mortgage relief, and anticipating an opening potentially in June 12th. And then Friday night, the team has another emergency to handle on top of that. At about midnight, um, you know, I think things really start to ramp up late Friday night around 11 o'clock. Saturday morning, around midnight, 12.30 in the morning, I get a phone call from Commissioner Hardesty, who says, are you watching this? I said, I am. She's in the uh, command vehicle with uh, Sarah Boone. She says, meet me at the Operations Center at Fire. Um, we have work to do. By 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm waking up the city attorney to start drafting an emergency declaration and a curfew request. I hear Mayor Wheeler's in the air, we're communicating with him while he's traveling back. We want that curfew order in his hand when he lands on the ground. Things went very, very rapidly in the early morning hours of Saturday. Uh, by 1 a.m., I'm on the phone call with the board up companies, the people that have the contract with Portland Police Bureau on board up. And this is just one out of dozens of contractors we'll work with throughout this weekend. And they're telling me, uh, Mike, we already got this. We're already on top of it. I've got the people power. I've got the equipment. We've got the lumber. We're, we, we've been watching. We're ready to go. And they hit the street early to start cleaning up and boarding up businesses. I call Chris Warner, the director of Portland uh, Transportation Bureau, again around 2 AM. Chris, the right-of-ways are full of debris. Construction debris, pallets, uh, um, uh, pylons, burnt cars, everything you can imagine in the right of way in Portland. We need our streets cleaned up. Mike, them on it. Dump trucks, street sweepers. I get phone calls, Portland Water Bureau, Director Mike Stir. Mike, anything you need, anything we've got, let us know. We'll get on it, we'll help you. Streets are clean today. Uh, glass and trash. I was able to get out early in the morning, about 5 a.m. Saturday morning, did a drive through. I needed to get a damage assessment, have some reporting to do. I needed to make sure the mayor knew, Commissioner Hardesty knew what really happened last night. Portland Police Bureau was already on top of it. It was clear, a lot of glass, a lot of trash on the sidewalks. Businesses were going to need help cleaning that up. 
make a couple of phone calls again. Marine Fisher, downtown clean and safe. I said, Marine, how do I tell the mayor what we're doing, how we're going to clean up all this glass? She says, Mike, don't worry about it. I already got it. Portland Patrol's out there. They're working with Central City Concern. We'll have this glass and trash cleaned up in no time. I've doubled the efforts. I'm already on it. Tremendous, tremendous work from our partners all over the, uh, the area getting this stuff done. Business owners, contractors cleaning up. Graffiti. There's a lot of graffiti out there. Um, I drove from North uh, Martin Luther King South into the downtown area, through the Pearl, Old Town, and then to downtown. Um, it was going to be an immense effort. Over 80 net team volunteers, Civic Life under Suk Ray's direction as the director of, of Civic Life, the uh, bureau with the uh, city of Portland who uh, helps us with graffiti abatement, put teams together and worked tirelessly throughout the day yesterday to start cleaning up Portland. There's still a lot of work to do. There was damage done last night again, not to the extent of Saturday morning. So we still have some graffiti to uh, work to clean up. We still have some glass to clean up. Right-of-ways look pretty good. I um, am paid to worry. It's been my job and my career as a fire chief and now as your emergency manager. But I'm also ever the optimist. I always see that light at that end of that tunnel. And I was starting to see it uh, during the, the COVID outbreak and flattening the curve and all the great work that Portlanders did to help us get to where we are at. We're ready to reopen on June 12th. And that light shut a little bit Saturday night, Saturday morning. Just a little bit. But I know we can do this, Portland. I've watched it. I've seen it. I've seen the volunteers come, the contractors, the business owners, the nonprofits, the community-based organizations, the bureau, the, the staff here with the city, the leadership everywhere has stepped up. That light's getting brighter. We can do this, Portland. We can make this city vibrant again. And we're going to do it together. Thank you. All right, thank you, Director Myers. Uh, we're now going to open up the floor for questions, and we ask that you tell us who you are addressing your question to, uh, and then, of course, share the question, and I will repeat it so that uh, viewers out there can hear it as well. Questions in-house here. Noel. Mayor, I'm wondering The question was about estimates around property damage, the number of businesses that were damaged, and the cumulative effect on property over the course of the weekend. Those estimates are still being compiled. Uh, I can tell you that the number of businesses that were impact, impacted is in the dozens. I can tell you that the initial rest, rough estimates coming to us from the business community are in the millions of dollars, uh, but those, uh, the specific information will be forthcoming in the days ahead. But it's, it is substantial. Right, does anyone else have any questions for Mayor Wheeler or anyone else? And what we'll do is once we get one person up here, if you have questions for them, go ahead and, and share all those questions and we'll get them answered so that we can do them each one at a time and not have to keep coming back and forth up here. Yes, Rachel. Uh, the question was in relation to a statement that was made yesterday about um, the actions uh, appearing to be a coordinated event and what we saw yesterday um, or yeah, last evening. Um, from what I'm being told, um, the event seemed different than the night before. 
Uh, the participants seemed different than the night before. Obviously, our teams are still working to identify all of those that were involved um, in causing any type of damage or committing any types of violent acts. Um, but that's what I'm being told so far, is that it appeared to be um, different in nature. Right, so um, on Friday night into Saturday, um, it was a, reg a relatively standard um, procedure for us. Uh, in addition, so last night, what we were able to do is we canceled all days off for all officers, so every Portland police officer that was available was working last night. We also brought in the additional resources from the other agencies that I mentioned earlier, uh, and we were able to use them to augment either uh, backfill for call-taking resources, uh, facilities uh, safety, um, or their uh, crowd management um, uh, resources if they had them. Some agencies have them. And as far as the protesters, uh, do you know, are the, are the folks that you have been taken into custody, are they from Portland or from the region? Can you talk a little about that? I don't have the location um, from where everybody is from, but I do know that it has been a mix. Some have been uh, locally and some have been from out of town. Any other questions? Thank you.